here, right here, right now. We are Facebook Live. This is the first Facebook Live interview of the day. Uh, we are about uh, actually three interviews into the day already here with Ira Wolf. If you have a question or a comment for Ira, we may have a couple of minutes right at the end. And uh, if you just paste in your comment or question, we will acknowledge that after we are done recording. Uh, for now, just feel free to post in where you're watching from, and we will acknowledge that at the end of the recording. So, Ira, I any questions for me before we go live here? I think I, I read your bio. If you could give me a five count real quick, Ira, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. We're about even, so that's awesome. Any uh, any other questions for me? No, yeah, I'm good. All right, so well, I'm going to go too. All right, we are going to get started here in... Wait a minute, I am just making sure I've got everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah, called a balk. <laughs> that's called a balk. Uh, a, a balk right there. Which uh, which TEDx were you? I, uh, oh, it was Lehigh River, right? Right. Yeah, it was Rel- Lehigh River. Yep. Relatively right up the street from me. Not really, yeah. but it's it's about two hours yep. up the street. Used to live uh, in Montco, so I would have been a, okay. yeah, uh, now, a neighboring neighboring uh, county yeah. from you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Ready? Uh, no, because I just did something there. That is strange. Come on. Make change. Oh, that was weird. Got it back. <laughs> this is just VUCA, this whole thing here. Every day. Every day. <laughs> All right. Okay. Make change work for you. All right. All right. We are live in three, two. We are live with Ira Wolf. Ira, are you ready to talk? I absolutely am, Nathan. Excited to do it. Ira S. Wolf is a millennial trapped in a baby boomer's body. He's known for his fierce passion for embracing exponential change and his commitment to understanding its impact on people, jobs, and work. Ira is an accomplished speaker and author, and he is the president of Success Performance Solutions. Ira's latest book is Recruiting in the Age of Googleizations, When the Shift Hits Your Plan. Ira Wolf, welcome to the talk. Hey, thanks for having me. It's uh, I guess about two weeks ago we met, and uh, I was really excited to hear you were doing this. And uh, It was actually one of those things after I got off the uh, TED stage. It was like, hey, I wanted to share the experience of getting here. It was just one of those things that didn't get done, so now I get to do it. Yeah, Appreciate now- it. Now we get to do it, Ira. I love this because, I mean, her, your talk is called Make Change Work for You, and you are Mr. Change. I mean, you are you are a, uh, a licensed dentist. You have this whole career, and you have completely shifted gears and really lived uh, the best of what you teach. So uh, uh, I know uh, 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 um, change and volatility is all par for the course. Please just summarize your talk for us in the next couple of minutes. Yeah. No, absolutely. And and just a, a minor correction. I'm actually not licensed anymore. When I walked away, I really walked away. You really I was you cut the cord. You know, okay. my, my tagline, I have a couple taglines, and one of them was, I loved everything about dentistry but dentistry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I liked everything that everybody else did. Um, but part of that, when I was doing the, um, the, the TED Talk, when I was preparing for it, which we'll get into some of the other details on that, um, one of the things was somebody said, you just love dancing with change. And that was part of it. And, uh, um, you know, although today's, you know, we were just talking about VUCA before and we can explain what that is, but just how crazy things are. And, and, you know, every time you open an interface, it seems to be different than it was yesterday. Uh, one Including of the, Skype, even, which we're I'm doing right now. About the change, <laughs> <laughs> you know, how fast things are, are occurring and how often they are. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. But the TED Talk was was about that. It was, it was about... You know, we we got to live with change. You know, change is you know the old saying. I think was Her, uh, Herculitis uh, had said that you know the only constant in life is change. Um, that's absolutely true. It just happens to be occurring at an exponential pace, and it makes all of us uncomfortable. But we we've got to get there. We've got to work hard at doing it. 
Well, and if you haven't seen this acronym uh, talk universe of VUCA, it's what's happening all the time. Uh, Ira just mentioned it because we've been talking about this because yeah. uh, every time you open up Skype, which which I use to record, it's always different and hard to find people. So the acronym comes from, I believe, the United States Army. It's an acronym for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. That's kind of a moniker for our times. Ira, in your talk, you turn it around. I love the positive spin, and you talk about instead of it being those four things, you redefine VUCA as vision, understanding, community, and abundance. Please take us a, a little bit far, uh, behind how you set that up and discovered those four possibilities to counteract these, right. uh, these, these uh, negative things. Yeah, and, and to give credit where credit's due, I wish I came up with that kind of ver- reverse, vice versa. Um, it, it's done by, um, I'm, I'm, and I'm drawing a blank on the, on the individual's name, but it's called VUCA Prime. Um, so if you look up VUCA Prime, you'll see the origins of it. Uh, but it, it's, yeah, I mean, we, I've yet to, to, to date to find somebody who says they don't agree that the world is more volatile. Uh, you know, even today, I mean, with the tweets and the news and things going on, uh, there's certainly a lot of uncertainty. There's, there's, it's much more complex and it's ambiguous. And I, and I think that's probably the one thing that people struggle with is that ambiguity. Even when you think you got it all together, there's still a, a level of uncertainty. We're just not sure what those choices are. Um, but the flip side of that was, you know, if you have a clear vision where you're going, it, it doesn't mean it, you, you know, you're just going to go from point A to point B. But at least if you have a vision, you have a path and you're always working toward that. And rather than focusing on the volatility, you're focusing forward and lots of different variations. Uh, you know, certainly understanding, understanding who you are, understanding what some of these implications are, uh, is, is critically, critically important. Um, the C and the A I've actually wrestled with, and I keep going back and forth with this. I, you know, in the TED talk, I talked about community. We're, we're all part of a bigger community. And that's part of the struggle today. I mean, uh, you know, just this morning, uh, or just an hour ago, I think we, we got the tweets that, you know, all these tariffs are on, you know, all the countries. I mean, that guy talked about volatility and uncertainty. Um, but I think the aspect that people forget about is we, we live in a world, a global community now. We're not national. We're, we're not isolated. And, you, you know, you and I may be 60 miles apart, but um, we could be doing this with people. 3,000 miles apart or 6,000 miles apart. So it really doesn't matter. So I keep going back between um, the C being communication, better communication and community. And and at the A, um, you know, it, again, I keep going, I, I, and this may even be a better term is agility. Is just we, we have to not just be adaptable, but we have to be good at being adaptable. And, and I think that's just rather than just saying, hey, we'll go with the flow, where we'll see what happens, we, we've got to become agile. And, and somebody explained this years ago, is the difference between flexibility and versatility was, was versatility was flexibility if you were at, with skills. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you were actually adept at flexibility. Well, and you're, and you're the same also, thing with uh, agility. Uh, Ira, you're also describing a proactive uh, initiative driven uh, mode where you're not going no it's not a good idea in these modern times to go with the flow you need to carve your own way but you also have to be agile and proactive and aware of whether it's working or not so that you can find a better way yeah and it's and it's challenging I mean it's that's incredibly challenging because you know it because we're saying we don't even know what it looks like I'm, I'm doing a, a something similar to this actually I only have three minutes it's a, it's a, a real short TED talk. I'm doing it Monday for uh, at an HR conference, um, and they they asked me three questions. And, and one of the questions I just which I they're going to pose to me was, you know, what's the world of work look like in ten years? And 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 part of that is ten years out is like a hundred years uh, uh, forecasting a hundred what a, forecasting a hundred years ago was just a few years ago. The reality is, is, is we're going to have a hundred years of change in the next five years, mm-hmm. if not ten years. And and forecasting things out ten years is really talking about what we used to do in the mid, you know, in the mid fifties. I'm a little older than you, but yeah. when you're around, and they forecast stuff, and they go, okay, in a hundred years from now, this is what it's going to be like. And now we're we're saying, hey, we're going to have a hundred years of, of change within the next ten years. Well, um, and it, so it, it, it's, 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 it's challenging, and, and it's tough to be proactive when when things are changing that fast. 
Ira, it's very similar. It reminds me of, hey, I'm going to start a business, Ira. And and in days past, in in decades past, you would tell me, well, you want to go to your local office of SCORE, the Service Corps of Retired Executives. You're going to walk in there. They're going to give you some free counseling, and they're going to help you write, Nathan, your 40-page business plan. And that that's still and follow what, that for five years, right? Yeah, and, and it's like it, it, five years and say, hey, how did we do? <laughs> yeah, and and so there, there's still that mode of thought in in some of our business schools where you have to have the business plan, and it's like, no, you go go to your local tech incubator. Sign up for a startup weekend, which is like a uh, 72 hour weekend immersive yeah. uh, apprentice style competition where you actually validate business ideas and get into groups. And if you don't have a business idea, you can find and join somebody else with a better business idea, join their team. And there are actually thriving seven, eight figure businesses and beyond today that have been incubated because of these simple models that scale and are very, as you mentioned, agile. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, and I think part of that goes into and in kind of deviating off the, the TED Talk, but it, it, it's certainly part of that, it is the, the, the necessity to be curious. Um, I, I love this term. It was in my book. I heard it a few years ago from uh, Jeff Hoffman. Jeff Hoffman was one of the founders of uh, Priceline. Um, most people are familiar with that. And, and a number, you know, he's a serial entrepreneur. Super good guy, and he, he talked about info sponging, and info sponging was the ability, he, he wakes up every morning and he reads something that people say, why are you reading that? What's that have to do with your business? And he says, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on in other industries and in other parts of the world and other parts of, of life, and how, would that, how could that possibly affect what I do today? And, uh, you know, I always gave the example of, uh, of like fast foods. Uh, didn't necessarily come. It, it came from banking because they had a, they had a drive up a window, and where did fast food come? So they said, well, if you can do banking at a as a teller in a drive through, why can't you do that? Why can't we get food <laughs> there too? Um, so it's it's how do things relate that? So every every day I, I I you know whatever headline comes through, if it looks interesting, I read it. You know, I mean, I have no use for blockchain. Um, but today, I read something on blockchain, and most people won't even know what it was, and we won't go into what it is, uh, other than people may know it from Bitcoin. But it was like, how, how's that going to affect work in, in 10 years? How's that going to affect hiring, uh, which, which is where, where I spend my time? And it is, it's going to radically change how people get jobs and careers and how we work and how we do banking and how we, you know, even how we um, transfer money. Uh, so it's it's crazy stuff that's out there, but it's it's fun. We we absolutely have to be curious and and even if you're not agile, you have to be open to that idea. You got to lean into it, talk universe. We've been enjoying this talk with Ira Wolf, and he gave a talk called "Make Change Work for You." In a moment, we're going to be back with Ira Wolf in the Blitz Round. And we're back with the Blitz Round. Ira Wolf, I'm going to ask you some either-or questions related to the actual preparation and performance of your recent TEDx talk. Ira, are you ready? I am ready. All right. Were you you selected to speak, or did you apply? We applied. Yeah, in the Lehigh Valley, uh, at least uh, up to this point, everybody's applied. So are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? I am, but that's not the way to, to do a TED Talk. And that, you know, I, I, I felt when I applied, I had a great message. I had a couple messages. I had actually a couple topics I felt to, top, to talk on. It was a challenge. It was really, really tough. Uh, and they said, they, they told us up front, the worst people to prepare for a TED Talk are people who are comfortable speaking. Um, not that they're not comfortable speaking, but they, they have a message. You know, I speak to business audiences. They want solutions. And in TED we're supposed to present an idea. I mean, you've been there. You understood it. Is what's the? It's not to communicate a message. It's to instill an idea and get people to ask questions so afterwards. I, that was really hard. Ira, I'm circling back because I didn't understand whether you are a memorizer or whether you're an improviser or if you put both of them together. I, I'm and- a, I, I, can, I can memorize easily, but it was the worst possible thing to do for a TED Talk. <laughs> okay, so what, what did you do instead? Well, I did. I, I just I rehearsed it. I rehearsed it everywhere. I rehearsed, and, and I guess in some ways that was memorizing it. But it wasn't. Um, it's I just got comfortable with the flow. Yeah. I mean, I, I would read it, read it, read it, read it, and then I put the paper down, and just it was wherever it took me. 
uh, to be able to do that. Uh, but that was intense. It, it was, you know, <laughs> at the gym, I'm, I, I do a Stairmaster elliptical. And it's like for weeks, I, I wasn't listening to my iPod. I wasn't watching TV. I wasn't reading anything. I was literally just reciting. People thought I was probably nuts because I was talking to myself, you know, for a half hour, 45 minutes, driving down the street. I was just constantly rehearsing. I think that's brilliant, Ira, because you were actually had your heart rate up. And that's a great, if <laughs> we always say, uh, you know, some of the, some of the people I interview, I mean, when we get on this, it's like anything you can do, run around the block and say your talk from, you know, yeah. from partially from memory or, or whatever. It's not about memorizing, but it's about getting yeah. that heart rate up and simulating the, the conditions. So that said, Ira, did you have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? I'd say both. Um, I think I was, um, the second to the last to go on that day. So, you know, and then there's an intermission. So you, you, I saw everybody going through it. And, and some of the people who were really struggling ahead of time did really, really well. And then it's like, okay, now not only do I have my bar to meet, but even some of the people who were struggling really did well. Um, you know, as soon as I went on stage, it just it just rolled. It it, it, it just took off. So I, 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 the, ahead of time, there was a little bit of nerves. You know, after, as soon as I hit the stage, it was it just came out. <laughs> Ira, what what advice for closers do you have? You're the second last to go. I was actually the last to go, so I, I love talking uh, to other closers. Yeah, um, you know, you got to relax. I mean, I just sat out there and watched it. You sort of enjoy it. I mean, it's easy to say now. Um, I'm not sure when you're in the moment, if, if, you know, what advice you can you can give to somebody. But it's you know, for many people, that's our Super Bowl. I mean, that's our one chance to get there, and 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 especially if it's the first time. I mean, I'm I'm sort of anxious to do it again, but now I'm hesitant because I, I keep looking for that. What's that? What's that idea? I, I I have a lot of great messages, but what's the idea behind the message? Um, but yeah, I, I I think you just have to enjoy the moment. But it's it's not it's easier said than done. <laughs> Ira, what's a tip, technique, or a tool that helped you? Oh, I, well, I think going back, I, I think it was just rehearsing it. I, you know, just I, I think the one tip that I'd give to anybody, and I didn't understand it. You know, they say, well, TED Talk could be 18 minutes. Um, if you can do it in seven, do it in seven. And I was told that. And they go, no, I have too much to say. I can't possibly get my message out in, in seven or eight minutes. If I had to do anything today, the one thing that I would do is do it in seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and really make it concise and to the point. Yeah, and I can, I can prove, uh, I, I used to, uh, actually look at the numbers and the visibility for, for a different, um, organization and the shorter talks. If you can get a, a sub 10 minute talk, you're going to automatically get yeah. more views as a result yeah, of it. Cause people, we absolutely. don't, no, we, I, I totally agree with we that. don't have 18 minutes. Uh, or, or, you know, 17 or 19 or, or whatever it is. So, um, you know, Ira, it's a performance. So what was the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your talk? Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. I was sort of in the zone. <laughs> I, um, I'm not, you know, that's tough. I'm not sure if there was anything that was, uh, you know, completely weird or, or, or different. I, I, I'm not sure. All right. Talk I'm universe. Sure. This is the first person. <laughs> this is almost the first person that's ever answered that in the question. Get in the zone. Stay in the zone. It's awesome. We've been enjoying this conversation with Ira Wolf, whose TEDx Lehigh River talk is called Make Change Work for You. You can go to our show notes page at be the talk.com and check out that talk. We'll have a link to it so you don't have to type it all out in YouTube. You can also visit Ira's uh, website there at irawolf.com. It's Ira Wolf is W O L F E with an yep. E on the end dot com. And in a moment, we'll be back with Ira Wolf for the final word of advice. And we're back with Ira Wolf. What's your final word of advice for Talk Universe? Um, everyone should put TEDx on their bucket list, but just because it looks easy, it takes a lot of work. I, I remember hearing, um, I think it was Harry Hamlin, if you remember from L.A. Law days. And uh, he, uh, I, I heard him on an interview, and he must have just given his TED Talk. Or, I don't know if it was TED or a TEDx. And, he, and they said, what was it like? And, and he talked about the same experience that I had. And here's an actor. You know, here's somebody who, who's read scripts and memorized scripts and, and done this. And he said, for three months, he said he thought his wife was going to divorce him. 
Uh, he was completely in the zone, just practicing. He said he's driving down the street, talking to himself, rehearsing this. Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay. So I, I think it's just be wary that just because it looks easy and you like to get in front of people and you can talk, uh, just just be wary. <laughs> be, be wary. It's a lot of work. It really is a lot of work. And I admire the people more now that do it than I even did before. Uh, and the easier it looks, the more I, I admire them. It, it, it's it's tough, but it's it's really worth doing. Ira Wolf, thanks for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thanks, Nathan. Great show. Good luck with it. Ah, yeah, one recorder, not two, because we're on Facebook Live. <laughs> All right. Hey, we had a little bit of engagement. My college roommate, Rich McBain, buddy. <laughs> Way to represent, man, 20 years ago, we were in the uh, neighbors in uh, freshman dorms together. He says, I'm ready to listen. And then he says, from being a pro professional pianist, then a teacher, then a pilot, then a flight instructor, back to a piano teacher, and now with sobriety, change has never been more welcomed and exciting. This is fascinating. Cool. Man, best yeah, best comment, Rich, that we've Sounds had like on here. That's like a TED Talk to me. <laughs> long time. Yeah. Hey, Rich. Come on, buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm taking this offline. A couple of final words uh, with Ira. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you're watching this uh, after the recording, which you probably are because only a few moments left, uh, write in a comment. Ira is going to see these and respond uh, in the, uh, the, the Omniverse uh, out there, the, the online uh, universe. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks.